This talk is an overview of the medical causes of depression, anxiety, mania, and psychosis. When creating a differential diagnosis for psychiatric symptoms, it's important to first rule out medical causes of symptoms before settling on a primary psychiatric disorder. This talk will outline common and rare medical causes of depression, anxiety, mania, and psychosis, and how to screen for them. Let's start with depression. The common causes of depression you should screen for can be remembered with the mnemonic DET. D vitamin refers to both vitamin D and vitamin B12 deficiencies and can be screened for by measuring levels of these vitamins. Electrolytes refer to electrolyte abnormalities that can cause depression, including hypokalemia, hyponatremia, and hypercalcemia. These can be screened for with a basic metabolic panel and calcium level. Blood refers to anemia, which can be screened for with a complete blood count. And thyroid refers to hypothyroidism, which can be screened for with a TSH level. Most patients with depressive symptoms should receive at least this basic screening, but there are some additional causes of depression that should be screened for if there is clinical suspicion. These can be remembered with the mnemonic MISER. Metals refers to heavy metals, such as lead poisoning. Immune refers to autoimmune conditions, such as lupus. These can be screened for with an ESR and ANA. Sleep refers to sleep problems, and specifically obstructive sleep apnea, which can be screened for with a sleep study. Endocrine refers to endocrine problems including hypercortisolemia and diabetes, which can be screened for with a cortisol level and hemoglobin A1c. And reproductive refers to sexually transmitted infections, including HIV and syphilis. Next, let's discuss anxiety. The common causes of anxiety can be remembered with the same mnemonic debt. The causes are a bit different, for example, hyperkalemia instead of hypokalemia, and hyperthyroidism instead of hypothyroidism, but the mnemonic still applies, and the screening tests are the same. As with depression, there are additional causes of anxiety that should be screened for if there is clinical suspicion, which can be remembered with the mnemonic PANIC. Pulmonary refers to asthma, COPD, and other chronic pulmonary problems, which can be screened for with pulmonary function tests. Adrenal refers to conditions such as pheochromocytoma, which can be screened for with urine catecholamines. Naughty refers to sexually transmitted infections, including syphilis. Immune refers to autoimmune conditions such as lupus. And cardio refers to arrhythmias, which can be screened for with an EKG. Let's now move on to mania, where things get a bit more complicated. Since mania is such a severe condition, and since patients with mania are often poor historians, you'll want to cast a wider net for potential medical causes. A thorough initial screen can be remembered with the mnemonic BUSTED. Basics includes a CMP and CBC. Urine refers to a urinalysis, urine drug screen, and urine pregnancy tests when applicable. Sex refers to HIV and syphilis. Thyroid refers to TSH. ESR refers to ESR and ANA. And D vitamin refers to vitamins D and B12. These studies are easy to obtain and will screen for a bevy of medical causes of mania, including psychoactive drugs, hyperthyroidism, autoimmune conditions, and so on. Additional rare causes of mania can be remembered with the mnemonic MONO. Metals, referring to both heavy metal poisoning and Wilson's disease, which can be screened for with serum copper and urine ceruloplasmin. Adrenal abnormalities, including hypercortisolism and pheochromocytoma. Neurologic abnormalities, warranting brain imaging and EEG. And certain kinds of dementia, such as frontotemporal dementia, which can be remembered by old. Initial screening for psychosis is the same as for mania. Screening for rare causes is similar, but with the addition of ruling out acute intermittent porphyria with urine porphyrins, so the more appropriate mnemonic here is MNOP. Remember, screening for rare causes should only be considered if initial testing is unrevealing, and the history or exam point towards one of these etiologies. For example, if the patient has focal neurologic deficits, then brain imaging should be completed. If there's associated tachycardia and hypertension, then adrenal abnormalities should be considered. And if there's associated abdominal pain, then porphyria should be considered. That's the end of the medical causes, but there's one last point I'd like to conclude with. If you're caring for a patient with acute mania or psychosis, then you're likely going to be treating them with an antipsychotic. As such, during the initial evaluation, you should also obtain baseline monitoring labs for antipsychotics, including a hemoglobin A1c, lipid profile, weight, and EKG. These can then be monitored over time. That's the end of this talk. I hope this is a helpful schema for screening for medical causes of depression, anxiety, mania, and psychosis. Thank you.